Got another exam question walk through for A level chemistry. So this is practical skills number 11. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. So the question includes a percentage yield calculation and a description for the preparation of a pure organic liquid. Hope you like the video, hope you find it helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. So this question is effectively a practical skills question dealing with the preparation of an organic liquid. So why does the student reflux in step one? So you notice in step one, they're, they're heating, they're refluxing for 30 minutes. So obviously they don't want any volatile substances to be lost. So that's why they use the reflux method. First part of part B, just straightforward reaction between sodium carbonate and sulfuric acid. So there's the equation there. A little bit trickier for the reaction between sodium carbonate and compound G. So there's two functional groups here. There's the carboxyl group and the OH of the, the phenol group effectively. So sodium carbonate can only react with the carboxyl group. So that means the equation looks like that. So you'll notice there that the carboxyl groups change to the salt, the COONA group. The phenol group has stayed intact. And then for the next part, we've got a comment on whether the, the student's suggestion of using sodium hydroxide is an improvement on the preparation of compound H. Well, there's compound H there. Sodium hydroxide will react with this, so that's not good. Um, it'll react with the phenol group this time. Remember, sodium carbonate can't, but sodium hydroxide can. It will also hydrolyze the ester, so it'll break that bond there. So obviously we don't want that to happen. So there's both reasons written up. You didn't have to give two, you just had to give one, uh, but I just wanted to cover both of them. Moving on to part C, the percentage yield calculation. So I've just written down from the previous page. They've used 8.97 grams of G, they've made 5.32 grams of H. So first thing we'll do is work out how many moles of G they've used. So mass over MR, 0.065, and because of the one-to-one -one ratio, they would expect to make that many moles of H. So now we'll calculate how many moles of H they actually made. So mass over MR again, 0.035 moles of H. So percentage yield is just the actual over the expected times 100, which comes out at 53.8%. And finally, part D, the purification of this organic liquid product. You'll notice I've highlighted the boiling point in green there and the density in pink. So obviously we need to refer to those in our answer. So the first thing I'm going to need to do to the product mixture is add it to a separating funnel. It's the lower layer we want because the density of compound H is higher than water. So we collect the lower layer containing H. Then we need to add a drying agent. So I'll give an example. So the one I always go for is anhydrous calcium chloride. You could have said anhydrous magnesium sulfate. And the role of that is to remove any last remaining traces of water in the sample. And then the last thing you do is you distill and collect the fraction that boils at the boiling point of compound H, so at 222 degrees C. 